Thank you for calling in on time as requested. And to honor your punctuality, we will start in time as scheduled. Welcome to this big webinar, one in a series of monthly webinars to inform our members, but also to ask their input as needed. Today, we will have an extended webinar running for an hour and a half, and we invited stakeholders other than big members to participate. I encourage you to post questions via the chat box so that we can handle them during the Q and A's. My name is Nello Imerencia, and I provide services in the field of programming to the Biobased Industries Consortium, BIC. And my portfolio include as main activities, strategies and planning and the annual work programs, human capital, basically how to ensure that we have the right skills and competences for the future of the Biobased industry and interact with students and graduates for a possible career in our sector and also the strategic outreach program, extending the bio-based industrial activities across Europe, in particular into the central and Eastern part of Europe. It is my pleasure to coordinate today's webinar. You have received the agenda for today and you've seen that we will have two blocks of testimonials and two items with Q and A's. And we also have a session or an item before talking about the basis for this project and an item thereafter talking about the next steps of the infrastructure created by the project. And we will conclude at 12 sharp. But before we get into the crux of the matter of today's webinar, let me take you back to 2015, when we just completed two annual work programs and set them in motion. And within BIC, we sat back and we looked back and looking ahead to 2020, we realized that we needed to adapt a few things to make sure that we meet the objectives set forth for our partnership uh, with the Commission. We adjusted the CIRA, the Strategic Innovation and Research Agenda, to move away from fixed number of value chains into a multi-value chain approach. We structure our activities into strategic orientations to focus new and innovative technologies and systems in the areas of bio-based feedstock, in the area of processing, converting, and downstream steps, in the area of new functional products to meet societal challenges, and last but not least, to increase and focus our actions to accelerate the market uptake of bio-based applications with sustainable end-of-life stage. And another change we introduced into the CRA was to include market demand and reaching out to brand owners and not only pursue feedstock push. We also noticed that actors in the bio-based sector were in dire need of facilities, expertise, and open innovation systems to test, upscale, and deploy innovative concepts, products, and applications. These are crucial steps to cross industrial and academic boundaries and create new, sustainable, circular bio-based systems throughout Europe. And this need has been expressed by large and small actors. We made a quick survey and this showed us that there are open access research and sites across Europe that could cater to these needs. However, many of them are not well known to the broad R and DNI communities in Europe. We didn't know uh, uh, about their existence nor of the equipment, facilities and services that these sites have to offer. And many of them, if not most, were not interconnected. So it's needless to say that in a scattered field like this, it would be especially difficult for small actors to find the best place at affordable cost to move their innovation through the development and upscaling stages to industrial levels and into the market. Also, isolated R&D sites forego the opportunities for efficiency and synergy in facilities and expertise. And finally, it was not clear to us if these sites were anticipating future needs for R and DNI and if they were planning to meet these needs. For all these reasons, we took up this topic in the annual work program 2016 that I'm showing here, number S2, bioeconomy related open access research infrastructure and assessing its capabilities for industry, industry driven development projects. We were calling for a two year running CSA project with two key assignments. First of all, to establish a European infrastructure of interconnected open access R and DNI sites that displays the inventory and facilities and expertise to advance bio-based innovations. 
that improves access for all actors, especially SMEs, and that safeguards its IP rights. And secondly, to define needed and specific expansion of the individual sites and the total infrastructure to meet anticipated future demand. BIC committed itself to assist the implementation through an industry expert group. The granted project, Pilots for You, by an eight partner consortium led by the Biobase Europe pilot plan started in 2017 and delivered its results in 2019. I can say safely that the consortium has been exemplary in working with the industry expert group and this has helped to lead to the desired outcome. BIC is committed to assist in sustaining the Pilots for You infrastructure, benefiting the full Biobase sector. This webinar dedicated to this infrastructure is part of our action and we would hope that the Commission would also step in and sustain the infrastructure since it serves and benefits the society at large. In particular, we are grateful to the Biobased Europe pilot plan for taking up the responsibility and dedicate an FTE for running and expanding the infrastructure and maintaining the customer relationships. This gentleman's name is Steph Denier, the Stakeholder Relations Manager for the Pilots for You Infrastructure and Database, and he will come into your uh, vision just in a few seconds. So now let's turn to this project team and bring this infrastructure right into your offices, into your homes, making it easy for you to see it and see how you can use it as needed. I've asked the team to do this in a lively, a visual and varied show, and I'm convinced this will be the case. Over to you, Steph. Thanks, Nilo, for your perfect introduction of uh, Pilots for You. Welcome to you all on behalf of the pilot for You community. My name is Steph Denayer and I'm the Stakeholder Relations Manager, consider it the SPOC, the single point of contact of this beautiful European network. We have been looking forward to this opportunity. For some of you, we are already known as the platform of good looking but very useful state of the art infrastructures and of course that's what we want to show you first. And by the way, it will also be the first time that we can show them to you together. But we are also a community of people uh, that work together uh, all over Europe um, and with a lot uh, of knowledge and expertise. So we want to share with you some testimonials, nice stories. And of course, we also will share our ambitions for 2021. Activities in the bioeconomy are booming. In the last two, three years, the sense of urgency grew drastically. The move from fossil-based to bio-based will get in a fast current. That means also a lot of pressure will come to the speed of upscaling innovative biotechnologies and finding new solutions. And that's exactly the role of us, shared pilot and demonstration facilities for the bioeconomy with an open access, an open door, helping innovative biotechnologies to market. You can compare it with the birth of sea turtles. Lots of eggs coming out, innovations, uh, but few small turtles will make it to the sea. They are eaten by the birds, burned by the sun. Um, so the Pilots for You community uh, it's, it's comparable. We protect these precious young things and innovations and guide them so that more of them survive and referring to the famous Valley of Death. And finally, uh, more of them, of course, reach the ocean, the real world, which is already tough enough. Images say more than words. Let us get this community alive and step with me into the wonderful world of Pilots for You. Thank you. 
Impressive, isn't it? As you can see, we are definitely not in the lab anymore. These are state-of-the-art facilities where you can scale up really to an industrial relevant scale. This was just a handful, just 23 uh, of what is waiting for you in Europe, more than 100 and counting. So let's start with the definition. What is an open access multipurpose pilot and demonstration facility? Why on earth uh, should you, you use it? And uh, Hendrik of the Biobased Europe pilot plant explains it to you in a simple way. Also from my side, welcome to this webinar that highlights the activities of pilots for you. pilots for you is an ecosystem of facilities that are open to any startup, small, medium or large enterprise looking for equipment and expertise to scale up your innovative process and translate your innovative lab scale process into a viable industrial process. Before we dive deeper into our facilities, please allow me to present a five minute beginner's guide to scale up. This beginner's guide is in fact a sneak preview of the more elaborate guide, Scale Up for Dummies. The perfect present for your colleagues and where we touch topics like the what, the why, the where, the when, the who and the how of Scale Up. What is Scale Up? Scale Up is the art of translating a protocol developed at laboratory scale into a technically and economically viable process at production scale. For bioprocesses, this can for example be the translation of the production of your bio-based product in a one liter shake flask to a 200,000 liter fermenter. How many steps and how many intermediate scales this will take you entirely depends on the complexity of the process and the robustness of the microorganism. For some bioprocesses like brewing beer, this might be achieved in only a handful of scales. However, for most industrial bioprocesses, scale-up will be a journey of many years, including unforeseen setbacks and frustrations. Another challenge to our business is that, contrary to beer or wine, we have to purify our bio-based product from the fermentation broth, using industrially applicable methods and equipment. In industrial fermentation processes, the cost for downstream purification can easily attribute to 60% of the overall production cost. And mimicking the required unit operations at laboratory scale is very difficult. But why is scale-up so crucial? Well, let's have a look at this curve. When processes are developed at lab scale, the technological risk is high, but the capital required to fund the research is low. There are plenty of investors who will be interested to support good ideas. At the other side of the curve, when uh, technology is going to be deployed, the technical, technological risk has been reduced to a very low level, but the capital requirements can be high. This can be again very attractive for investors or banks to step, step in. However, at this intermediate scale, at the pilot and demo scale, both the technological risk is high and you will need a lot of capital. This is the phase where many investors run out of the room and your innovation dies quietly in the valley of death, where it will find many corpses of other once high potential innovations. This is exactly where the pilots for you facilities step in. By offering access to shared pilot facilities, one can significantly reduce the cost, the time and the risk to get your innovation to the market. Not convinced yet? Well, let's take a practical example. Imagine the new company BioOptimist that has developed a new bio-based product. BioOptimist wants to scale up their process developed at lab scale to 15,000 liter scale. They want to do this for the following reasons. They want to demonstrate that the technology is sound to convince investors. They want to produce larger amounts of their bio-based product for application trials and for market introduction. And finally, they want to use the obtained data sets for life cycle assessment and techno-economic assessment. What is needed for this? Together with the consultant, they come up with the following program. 
They aim to run 10 fermentations at 150 liter scale and use the fermentation broth for downstream purification tests. Subsequently, they want to run the fermentation process 5 times at 1500 liter scale and compare two potential purification routes. Finally, they are going to take the best process to 15,000 liter scale, run it three times, demonstrating the reproducibility and generating sufficient quantities of product. BioOptimist has two options. Either they build their own pilot and demonstration units or they partner with one of the Pilots for You members. When they decide to build their own pilot facilities, it's going to take them very optimistically three months to do the design, one year to build, they will need 15 to 25 million euro for the infrastructure and 5 million euro per year to run the plant. When they partner with an op open access shared pilot and demonstration facility, nothing needs to be designed nor constructed. They pay a service fee which was estimated to be 1 million euro for the program shown on the previous slide. So as you can see, it's not only much cheaper, but also much faster to partner with one of the pilots for you members, and this with clear and reliable timelines. This is a crucial factor to be ahead of the competition. Finally, it's even better to partner with the pilots for you member, as scale-up is our core business. So relax, we have all the equipment you need. However, Running a pilot plant is much more than having nice toys to play with. It's the talent and the expertise that goes with it and allowed the Pilots for You members to grow faster than the bioeconomy does. Scale up goes with ups and downs, with so sometimes great results, but also sometimes with slow growing microbes, blocked filters, and other unexpected results. It is in such situations that you need a team that can handle difficult circumstances and a mindset that embraces flexibility. Thank you, and with this I would like to give the word back to Steph. Thank you, Hendrik. You immediately made us smarties instead of dummies when it comes to the value shared pilot and demo facilities have on speed and total cost. In this particular case, to users in industrial biotech. They have state-of-the-art equipment, but also talent and expertise. Susan, a young and ambitious entrepreneur, is also convinced that they are the most cost-effective manner to support the deployment of industry-driven innovations in the market. Here is Pilot for You in a nutshell. The European bioeconomy is booming, and that's great news, not just in terms of jobs. It's key to a sustainable circular economy that can respond to challenges such as increasing populations, depleting natural resources, and global warming. Of course, turning your bioinnovation into a marketable product is easier said than done. But that's where Pilots for You comes in. A growing European network of pilot and demo plants, state-of-the-art, flexible and industrial. Plants that are open to any startup, small, medium or large enterprise, with all the equipment and expertise to translate your innovative lab work into a viable industrial process. The benefits? With a combination of flexible process equipment and highly experienced personnel, Pilots for You facilities can be tailored to your process and vastly reduce costs, risk and development time. But where do you find such facilities? Well, Pilots for You knows where to find all open access bioeconomy pilot facilities in Europe. Just go to our website biopilotsforyou.eu. Scroll down to consult our database and find the facility that matches your specific needs and wishes. Each entry contains a detailed overview of the available equipment. So visit our website and if you know a pilot facility that would like to join the network, just get in touch. Whether you are a startup, small to medium enterprise or a large player, boost your innovation and shorten your time to market with Pilots for You. Pilots for You 
empowering the European bioeconomy. Pilots for You is a community, but also an easily accessible database of open access, multi-purpose pilot and demonstration infrastructures for the European bioeconomy. Within this database, multi-purpose and bioeconomy are translated into 10 main technology areas and 35 different technologies. This makes it easier and more convenient to find exactly what you are looking for. Are you wondering which technology areas are eligible? We summarize them briefly and show who is active in which area. We have the big members in the audience of this webinar today. So shall we take a poll right now and ask a big member about his experience working with a Pilots for You facility? So let's go to Finland, where Niklas von Warmarn of Metza Group will tell us about a positive experience his company working, uh, his company had working together with the open access facility VTT Bioruki. So, uh, good morning, Nicholas and Mika. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I propose that uh, Mika starts with uh, introducing uh, himself and VTT. <coughs> yes, good morning, everyone. I'm happy for the possibility to, to talk about our pilots and, and in particular this case with, with Metsä. So, my name is Mika Herkönen. Uh, I come from VTT, the Technical Research Center of Finland, where I have been working about 15 years with developing our pilot plants, service offering, and also, also networking. VTT sees itself as a <clears throat> science to innovation bridge, and uh, therefore we are focusing very much in, in the applied research and scale up. As seen in the slide, our pilots have a good coverage for the bio and circular economy processes and, and value chain. Maybe our specialties are, are the, the pilots for new bio-based materials and the pilots for chemical conversions for value-added uh, products. This case today is dealing with, with our process chemistry pilot plant. Okay, and uh, Niklas. Thank you. My name is Niklas von Weimann. I work for an organization called Metze Group. 
Metsä Group is in practice a, a large uh, forest industry company, uh, but uh, we are a bit different uh, in that sense that the parent company is a uh, cooperative and the cooperative has in practice over 100,000 Finnish forest owners as the owner members. Today we have uh, five business areas and since 2018 we also have an innovation company called Metsaspring, which I'm uh, leading. Uh, on a personal uh, note, I have a Doctor of Science degree in biotechnology. Thank you. Nicholas, um, first question is uh, for you. Uh, so uh, why have you used uh, an uh, access, uh, open access pilot plant in your uh, textile, textile fiber uh, development work? Uh, why did you do that? Well, in, in our uh, development work, you have to scale up. Uh, you start in lab scale and then you, you start to think about the next scale. Uh, and uh, you could, of course, uh, uh, buy, that, uh, buy and, and, and build that uh, pilot plant in-house, but that, that doesn't really make sense for a large company. So we looked for uh, the best partners in Europe uh, to, to, to uh, do the pilot phase. And, and we, we did, in practice, that collaboration with VTT uh, uh, for ter, two of the, the, the departments, uh, if you could say so, and the rest then with the German uh, uh, open access pilot plant uh, called TITK. So indeed, Mika, a collaboration was, was going on. Yeah, uh, this is a good example of, of our customers. They're very often looking for new business opportunities. And for us, they, they are buying services for, for getting information for the investment decisions, whether they go to pilot or, or production unit or whatever. Uh, our customers are both, both large companies, but also startup companies are working with us. Okay. So, uh, and Nicholas, uh, what do you find important in collaborating with uh, open access pilot plans? Well, I I want to highlight two things. Uh, the first one is, is the flexibility of, of the, the facility. So you, you need to be in a position to, to uh, help many companies and, and that, that requires flexibility from your equipment. The second uh, uh, part is, is the, the people. So you really need to have capable uh, personnel uh, in the facility uh, who can then handle different uh, challenges and so on. So and that was also the case at um, yeah Mika at your place at your place yeah um, I mean from our side it's important that there's a good co working collaboration with the customer and their their place in the in the pilot when we are running it I mean we are doing still uh, scale up research and and many cases there's a, maybe the equipment are not optimal for the purpose so it's very important to the customers there it helps us to make the test run successful. Um, Nicholas, VTT is not the only shared facility that you used in the whole process. Uh, why was that? Well, for a large company, um, it is important to find the best uh, facilities, both in terms of equipment and, and uh, uh, personnel. And in the pilot scale, uh, it's still possible to, to do one part in one country and the second part then in the second country. And uh, in this case, then we ended up in, 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 in having two partners. So uh, Mika, that uh, means that uh, every uh, facility has its uh, speciality. Yes, uh, I, I see the specialization of European pilot providers is very, very important. It's, it's important in respect to wise use of scarce investment money, but it's also important for sustainable business of the pilot providers. There's not enough customers for all if you do not specialize and develop our spearhead competencies. And in that respect, the, the networks like Pilots for You is very important that we know what is ongoing with each other pilots. Okay, last question to Niklas. Uh, what, what is your takeaway message for uh, the audience today? What, uh, what can be improved in the, in the future? Well, I think uh, specialization is, is key here. It doesn't make sense to, to build the same facilities in each of the member states of the European Union. As we, as large companies, we, we, we easily go uh, to, 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 for instance, Germany to, to do piloting. So, so please uh, uh, find your, your uh, core competence and, and focus on, on, on that. Um, uh, yeah, do not copy paste. Okay, thank you both. and. Uh... Seeing you in the near future. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.
This was the experience of a large company, but uh, let us also look at the largest and most important group of small and medium-sized enterprises. They too look back with satisfaction on the cooperation with our Pilots for You members. The number of assets currently included in the Pilots for You database show that Europe has already significant shared pilot and demo facilities. That was one of the policy recommendations of the formal project. We already have enough of them. The initial investment in such facilities is very high, so why copy-paste them in every country? Would it not be better to further strengthen and invest in existing infrastructures to keep them state-of-the-art, increase their flexibility and improve interregional access? Industrial questions can sometimes be complex and require the cooperation of several pilots and demo facilities to arrive at an adequate total solution. And that is also something the Pilots for You network wants, wants to encourage. So two German Pilots for You members can testify this. So good morning, Gert and Michael. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. So uh, please, uh, Michael, give us a short introduction of yourself. My name is Michael Katzberg. I'm Managing Director of EW Biotech. EW Biotech is a family-owned company that uh, recognizes that scaling up and getting a very good uh, biotech process into the market is quite a challenge, not only technically, but also um, financially and uh, from a risk point of view. So um, we have a facility that is shared with all and everybody in the world who needs it uh, to scale up and demonstrate their process. Okay, thank you. And Gert, floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Gerd Unkelbach. I am director of the Fraunhofer Center for Chemical and Biotechnological Processes, located at the Leuna Chemical Site. And as part of the Fraunhofer Gesellschaft, the world's largest organization for applied research, we are looking on R&D questions uh, dedicated to scale up and also solving these issues and optimizing the processes uh, during pretreatment, during industrial biotechnology, or also during chemical conversion of renewables. Okay, my first question is uh, to uh, Michael. So two pilots for you facilities collaborating with each other. Uh, how, did you, how did that start in fact? It started much earlier because we are located at the same site here in Leuna and um, we know each other quite some time and know the, the equipment. And so um, 
we always think about what is best for the customer and, and putting really those needs into the center. And here the collaboration was the best fit. And so we started collaborating to have uh, a good result very fast and close by. Okay, and uh, Gert, this uh, collaboration started early in the process, didn't it? Yeah, it starts uh, very early, um, also during a kind of R&D phase, and therefore we also stepped in this collaboration because we found out that uh, we had several questions uh, which we have to answer before we do a scale up to the demo scale at the EW facility. And therefore we use our equipment uh, at the CBP because we have all the equipment uh, we need um, in the existing piloting facilities in, the, yeah, in different scales. And also we have uh, different know-how uh, looking on the individual questions our partners need. Okay, and what was the benefit for, uh, for the client? Yeah, as I said, uh, they got a de-risking step before uh, we enter the larger scale, larger scale in the sense of demonstration scale, because then we are talking uh, about a high operational cost and uh, also high risk. And uh, because we are more R&D focused, uh, we have the possibilities to bridge the gap between lab scale and the first piloting step, I would say. Okay. Um, and why is it a good strategy for pilot uh, facilities to collaborate? Uh, what's in it for Europe, Gert? In Europe, we have different piloting facilities with individual infrastructure. And because we know each other quite well, since a couple of years from now, we can also guideline the partner uh, to the individual process steps and we can directly select the right equipment. And that's our main uh, focus, that we can solve also R&D questions which arise during the scale up. So with all the piloting opportunities in Europe, which are already existing, our partners get the best value for money. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, and Michael, uh, the work you did was more than combining uh, the equipment of both facilities. Yeah, it's not a, a mere uh, combination of equipment. Um, I think the benefit, not only equipment-wise, is also that you gather together scientists, process engineers that are keen to develop processes and uh, seeing projects succeed. And um, it's a very good objective to see more biotech process in the market that uh, really are exiting the labs and the piloting facilities and really become producers and show that bioeconomy can be a reality. Yeah, indeed. Um, so, uh, Gert, it's also a bit guiding customers to the jungle of uh, possibilities. Uh, am I correct? Definitely. So, um, as uh, we have several pilot facilities uh, within Europe, and uh, we receive also several requests to the independent pilot facilities. It's better for combining uh, the existing know-how and infrastructure so that uh, our partners or the partners who need a scale up, especially in industrial biotech, gets an optimized process and a streamlined scale up. Okay, that's a nice story. Uh, thank you and uh, yeah, I wish you a further nice and uh, successful collaboration in the future. Thank you both. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah. So, and now it's time for your questions. Uh, so, over to Nilo. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for the show so far. I think these are very, very interesting and very impressive testimonials that we have heard so far. And uh, Steph, let us know, have you seen any questions coming in uh, yet? Yes, yes, indeed, uh, Nilo. And uh, the first question that we uh, received was, um, is the scale-up pilot for you approved for the production of 
food ingredients or uh, and feed additives? Um, yeah, and the answer is uh, yes, many of the facilities have tremendous experience in different food and feed uh, projects. And um, depending on the certification, each facility has um, uh, some can deliver food or feed grade products like uh, more part technologies, BPF, uh, BioWay Zero Pilot Plant, Ilvo Food Pilot, uh, just, uh, just name a few. Uh, not all, of course, but a few of them, yeah. And then a uh, second question that uh, came in, how does Pilot for You approach potential overlaps in existing uh, expertise uh, and infrastructure or for possible expansions and new developments? Um, yeah, and that is the approach um, that we have. Eh? We, we uh, uh, have this connection, we, we became a network and this collaboration is very important for us to better understand each other, to uh, know what are the specialities of each and to combine these. And these are exercises going on. Uh, and of course, there will be overlaps uh, and, and that's not harmful, but indeed there could be gaps, there could be demands in the market uh, that uh, we have to close together. And then we have to good, uh, think about uh, where to invest, eh? and that's also important for the regions eh? to uh, not invest uh, in anything and, and do anything at the same, uh, um, a a everything at the same time. So that is the uh, the ambition of our network now at the moment. So creating this collaboration, knowing each other, and then taking decisions about uh, uh, smart investments. So this word, uh, yeah. if I may add, Steph, this is uh, one of the key things why we call for this project. Yeah, it is only by interconnecting and knowing about each other that you can you can minimize overlap. There will always be over, overlaps. You cannot avoid all of it, but you, we can minimize it. And uh, especially the words by Nicholas, you know, we should not do copy paste because this will be very very inefficient and certainly not seeking synergy. So this is one of the key tasks for this platform, this community to pursue, yeah. Yeah, indeed, eh? it, it, it are normally huge investments. So you, you, you can spend your money only once. So better think before you act. So thank you. Uh, so these were the questions. Um, so let's go to the next uh, part of our uh, webinar. Um, uh, see you, okay. So far, we have already seen quite some amazing open access facilities passing by. But where can you find these infrastructures? I will now seize the opportunity to take you literally into the database itself, so you can witness how quickly and easily such a search can be made. So we are on the platform now. You can see my telephone number and uh, direct email address. And this is uh, the platform. You can first, for example, check the technology scope. Uh, we have different technology areas and they are all uh, put in a summary. So if you start searching, you can probably first check this chart. Um, this is the technology scope and uh, of course there is also the latest updates, the latest news about um, pilots for you. But this is the quick uh, way to uh, search for some equipment and uh, technology. So here for example if you click on chemical processing and uh, uh, you can uh, check what is available very easy in uh, Europe, uh, in different countries, coming from different entities. This is the quick uh, way to do a search. There is also uh, a step-by-step -step search that can be done, where you start by, for example, here searching for mechanical separations, then you have a next step, then you click on one of them, for example, we are in search for membrane filtration. Uh, you click on that and again, next step. And let's say that we are searching in a specific country. Uh, 
France. Uh, next step. Uh, if you know some already a provider, you can enter here a name. Um, but let's go to the next step and then search. And then you have all the available uh, equipment and facilities that are present in um, France within this area. So here you have all of them uh, listed easily accessible. If you are not ready, already present on the database and you have a shared open facility um, for piloting and demonstration, then you can, for example, here add an entry. So it's quite easy. You can enter your own information yourself and then afterwards it will be pu published on the platform. End to end, of course, if you have any questions, you can put them here in this box and it will be sent to me and I will contact you later. So this is Pilots for You, uh, the platform in a nutshell. Helping startups and scale-ups to scale up their processes is an important responsibility of the Pilots for You members. These startups also experience the benefits of using a shared pilot and demo facility. So good morning, Maria and Thomas in Sweden. Good morning. Good morning. So um, Thomas, yeah, you can start uh, introducing yourself uh, shortly. Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Thomas Rolin and I work as a product manager for uh, Lignin Industries. We are a Swedish company making the moss out of the Scandinavian forests by transforming lignin, which is a residue from the pulp and paper industry today, into a high performance material for the plastic industry. We are located in, in Stockholm, uh, close to um, uh, Arlanda Airport, and producing this uh, innovative material. Okay, and uh, Maria from uh, Rice. Yeah, hi, thanks. Maria, working as a project manager within RISE and also with business development at the Testbed Ligna City, which is an open facility where we welcome ideas within bioeconomy in general and lignin in particular. And our facility can produce large custom made volumes of lignin. So the availability of the raw material is one of our strengths. And by getting in touch with Ligna City, you will meet our broad network of competence and expertise within RISE in different areas, both in terms of research and innovation but also in business development and commercialization of a first product. Lignus City can offer space to build up a first pilot and step-by-step step follow the idea to market. And the region Värmland and municipality where Lignus City is located has a strong focus in bioeconomy and offer a great support for startups willing to establish in the area. And by contacting Lignus City, we will do our very best to find out the needs for you and your growing bioeconomy business and support it in the best possible way. So welcome uh, to contact us and we look forward to meet you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Maria. So first uh, question uh, to Thomas. Uh, only two years ago, you started with three people uh, and the ambition to make thermoplastics from wood, didn't you? Yes, that's correct. The company started two years ago um, and uh, the ambition is, is, is um, to produce the material for the plastic industry using lignin. So uh, after uh, a patent was, uh, was uh, made with my colleagues, um, we decided to uh, be located at RICE to benefit from, uh, from the knowledge and the expertise from uh, RICE people. Okay, and Maria, you hosted uh, this uh, startup and uh, how did you do that? Yeah, with the ambition to create a substitute to plastic labs, Tests were started up in collaboration with my colleagues, uh, both with chemical knowledge and uh, how to modify the lignin, and also knowledge and the availability of an extruder to make the granules in it. And step by step, uh, the samples turn out to be successful, and this is now what lignin industries are producing commercially. And RICE facilitated the first steps with availability of both facilities, equipment, and the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Thomas, uh, what were the advantages for you uh, in upscaling your technology at, uh, at RISE? I think the, the benefits was, uh, first of all, uh, regarding the equipment that we can find at the RISE facility. Uh, that was very helpful for us to benefit 
from, uh, for example, an extruder, which is a key element for our process. The second uh, very beneficial point for us was to uh, be able to speak with people and, and uh, especially rice people uh, regarding how to use this equipment and, and run an extruder without technology. So uh, those two points were key in our uh, growth and, and uh, definitely helped us to uh, grow and, and build up this uh, company and, and unit here in, in Sweden. So, and where do you stand now, uh, Thomas? Uh, what, what, is, what are the plans in the near future? So, we are located uh, right now close to Arlanda Airport in Stockholm, where we produce 2,000 tons per year of our uh, innovative material. The goal is, of course, now to grow and, and uh, scale up again and produce between 10 and 20,000 tons per year uh, in 2023. And uh, that will probably uh, be done uh, here in Sweden or in Scandinavia. Okay, clear. So, Maria, uh, what makes you happy when you see this uh, fast evolution? Yeah, to see such an idea grow at this speed is very satisfying. And I trust there is a huge market out there ready to use a bio-based substitute for plastic. And I also hope that other entrepreneurs can be inspired from the story and try to make their idea grow as well. And uh, this will create uh, together a more sustainable future. Okay. Yeah, thank you for this uh, short interview and uh, I wish you all the luck, uh, Thomas and also Maria, in the, in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. So uh, Lignin Industries is uh, one of the many startups, uh, small businesses that have had a positive experience working with the shared pilot and demonstration facilities of uh, Pilots for You. Um, here are a few more. Pilots for You Network has an important role in the whole process of upscaling, helping innovations from lab to the industrial world. And I want to stress our community, we are not uh, an island somewhere far away where you have to take your boat and row and, and get your services done and then afterwards row back to normal life. We want to get linked in the future to all communities in the bioeconomy. And Pilots for You is very good positioned in the middle. Uh, we are linked on the left side with the emerging technologies, with startups, with feedstocks, with biomass providers. Uh, on the other side, we lower the risks for SMEs, uh, providing them access to finance. And of course, and very important, uh, being connected uh, with the huge industrial demand for bio-based products. 
that are switching from fossil-based to bio-based materials. So I'm very proud and happy that we can announce today uh, uh, something. Uh, you have the scoop, so let's go to John. Good morning, uh, John, from the Netherlands, from BTG. Uh, you will tell us about the connection that will be made uh, soon with the pilots for you and a new project uh, coming on, Tech for Bioways. So, uh, John, tell us all about this. Yeah, thanks, uh, Steph. Uh, welcome, too. Uh, I'm pleased to be here today to tell something about uh, Tech for Biowaste. Tech for Biowaste is actually a new coordination and support action. And the objective of it is to provide the bio-based industry a complete overview of existing as well as emerging technologies for the valorization of bio-waste into value-added applications. Bio-waste meaning food waste as well as garden waste. And uh, we will set up a technology database as well as an associated decision support tool for the technology matching and comparison. Okay, and in that activity, do stakeholders needs take a central stage? Well, indeed, stakeholders are at the key of uh, this project and we will interact with uh, different stakeholder groups. Uh, for example, the project will conduct surveys to assess, confirm and quantify the interest and the actual needs of actors in the bio-based and the bio-waste utilization industry. Uh, we will conduct a feasibility study to qualify the interest and the commitment of the intended database users and contributors. And on what uh, projects will uh, Tech for Biowaste build? Uh, the Tech for Biowaste project uh, will build on a range of earlier bioeconomy projects, uh, Steph. And uh, you can think of projects dealing with uh, clustering of open research facilities, technology assessment, database tool development, applications of artificial intelligence and the like. And the results and outcomes of these other projects, including, for example, uh, the CSA project Pilots for You, can be embedded or interlinked with the Tech for Biowaste database. So that's a nice connection with Pilots for You. And what happens when the CSA project ends? Yes, thanks, Steph. Uh, well, when the project ends, that will be uh, early 2023, if everything went, goes well, then one of the options is to expand the uh, database post-project into a fully service-based functional database with additional features that further serves the changing needs of the stakeholders regarding information flow. So and what will, when will we start, uh, John? Soon, I think. Yeah, well, we'll start very soon, Steph. Actually, we're going to start in a week's time on uh, next week, Thursday, the 1st of April. And it's not an April Fool Day uh, joke. Uh, the two-year project is scheduled to run from, from April this year till March 2023. Okay, thank you, uh, John. Looking forward to that. So do I, Steph. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a good webinar. Thank you. Let us listen again to the experience from the field with another example of a beautiful collaboration between different pilots for you facilities. This one within a public European collaboration project. So, uh, Villa and Karel, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, yeah, let's uh, start with a short introduction, uh, Villa. Please. Hi, my name is Ville Nikkanen. I work for VTT as a research scientist. And uh, with Karel, we work in a European project called Biosphera. And uh, I'm responsible for piloting operations in that project. OK, Karel. So hello, I'm uh, Karel de Winter. I'm uh, heading technology development uh, at Biobase Europe uh, pilot plant. Um, here at the pilot plant, we uh, are active in many different uh, fields, ranging from biomass pretreatment to fermentation, downstream processing, and also uh, gas fermentation. Uh, and actually, I'm, I'm quite excited uh, about this interview today to talk a bit about um, one of the newest gas fermentation projects that we are involved with, and where uh, together with VTT, 
uh, we will uh, yeah we will work on some uh, exciting technologies um, showing um, yeah the transformation of CO2 into uh, into valuable chemicals and fuels. Okay, thank you, Carol. So the first question is to Villa. How uh, do you uh, do? I have to see this collaboration. What what's what's the plan, in fact? Well, in the biosphere project, we um, aim to produce aviation and marine fuels with a new process. And VTT is responsible there for producing clean synthesis gas from different uh, biomass feedstocks and waste feedstocks. And then uh, with Biobase Europe pilot plant, we will uh, combine our expertise and facilities with Biopest Europe's facilities and use soon gas fermentation to make one crucial step of the process. And yeah. Okay. And uh, Karel, uh, which technologies, infrastructure and, and expertise from both uh, facilities are brought together in this project? Yeah, I, I think this is, this is a, a very nice thing about this project. Eh? Uh, because on the one hand, as Fila already nicely uh, illustrated, uh, some gasification technology, very well established gasification technology, SVTT, uh, will be used to produce a clean syngas uh, and even different grades of syngas. And that will then be coupled with gas fermentation technology, where at BBPP we are quite strong at. Um, it will be combined basically with our mobile gas fermentation unit. Uh, which is really a state-of-the-art uh, piece of equipment um, that uh, will uh, in SUTI um, be coupled uh, together um, with the gasification plant. So by doing that, we will, uh, we will be able to, uh, to really connect the technologies and go all the way from uh, the waste, uh, the biomass waste streams to the valuables. Okay. And uh, uh, Karel, is this an exchange of only equipment or...? Is it also an exchange of staff or? Yeah, yeah well, that, that's actually a very good question eh? because uh, yeah, expertise, of course, does not only come with equipment. Eh? These, uh, these units are very complex uh, units. And I think if, uh, for example, from uh, BBPP side, we were to operate uh, the gasification plant at VTT, that would probably not be a success. Uh, and I think the same applies for the gas fermentation. So in that respect, uh, we will be physically moving uh, with uh, a big container to uh, VTT in Finland. And we will also um, be going there with a number of engineers to make sure that uh, everything goes uh, smoothly. Mm, okay. So, Villa, um, the fact that you didn't have to start from scratch in, uh, in this project, um, this results in several uh, advantages, I suppose. Yeah, I, I can see at least three main advantages in that first is that we have invested millions of euros in the infrastructure which would be quite expensive for for other companies or organizations to do the same then the second is that we uh, save in time and the schedule can be much more shorter as we have already the infrastructure in place we just need to uh, connect the different inf infrastructure with these mobile uh, units. And then I think the third crucial advantage is that we have the expertise and the analytical tools that we can really understand the process. And uh, that could be difficult if you do it in, in from a scratch. Yeah, indeed. Um, and uh, Question to Karl. Uh, yeah, w what is the advantage for Europe uh, um, in this kind of collaborations when within public funded projects? What, what, what is the advantage for Europe? Yeah, I, I think actually Europe or uh, maybe even society in general is the big winner of these kind of collaborations. Eh? As Phila already uh, explained, eh, there is quite a lot of know how at VTT, there is quite a lot of know how at BBPP rather and also equipment eh? rather than uh, building these equipments from scratch up uh, at a certain facility uh, or trying to uh, understand the entire process from from just one uh, pilot plant yeah by combining these eh, we really um, have a strong story that uh, makes 
in a very, very efficient way use of resources that, um, that are made available by Europe. So I think this kind of collaboration is a, is a prime example of making the most of, uh, of subsidies uh, to really make a change. Yeah. So yeah, that will be a very wonderful uh, collaboration uh, going on uh, between you. So uh, yeah, congrats and uh, wish you all the luck with, uh, with this project. And uh, yeah, hope to see you soon. Uh, and thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Ciao. bye bye. Bye. Besides the bilateral work, our pilot for you partners are also actively involved in numerous regional and European public collaboration projects. It is amazing what goes on within the walls of a shared pilot and demonstration facility and what innovative technologies are being scaled up. Time to serve you a coffee and watch a movie of a true scale-up story. It's the story of forestry waste park that defeated fossil feedstocks and was transformed in 2,3-butane-diol, a chemical building block that can be used uh, to make insulation material, or how a tree makes a warm house. This work was performed within Rehab, a consortium project funded by the European Union within the Horizon 2020 program. Don't worry, it's a story with a happy ending at TRL 6. Welcome to Biobase Europe Pilot Ground. We can do amazing things here, like turning this bark into 2 3 butane dial and all process steps under one roof. The bark goes into the pulper for size reduction and extreme mixing with water. Let's pop up the value. We sent a pulp through the jet cooker to break open the cells under high pressure. But hey, no pressure, no diamonds. The chamber filter press separates the wooden sugars from the biomass. And now, next step, solid liquid separation, the centrifuge. Hold on here. Let's bring these precious woody sugars to the fermentation hall. Welcome to the beating heart of BioBase Europe Pilot Plant. Here is where the magic happens. Using bacteria, glucose is converted to 2 3 betaine diol.
constantly monitor the quality of your product and can produce food grade. We also have large DSP equipment to purify our products in an efficient way. To get the butane dial out of our fermentation broth, we use green solvents in our explosion-proof process hole. So, we're almost at the end of our webinar, but before moving on to the second Q&A session, let me explain pilots for you plans for the short term, let's say 2021. pilots for you has been a project that has been over for a while, so now we are a community. And what we want to do is first show us as much as possible. Uh, put ourselves on the map as an important link in the bioeconomy. Today, we already uh, made a first good step. And second, we want to fully connect with the strongly growing bioeconomy ecosystem. And third, we want to connect even more with each, with each other and collaborate to offer the best solutions to the business world, small and large especially the large ones, are very important, given the ambitious goals that are in place. So for the first one about showing, we already created a YouTube ch channel with a lot of visual experiences. Uh, for example, the interview that we couldn't broadcast today with another large big member, uh, AB InBev, and the pilot for you facility Improve in France. So. Don't hesitate to watch this. Uh, and from today on, you uh, can follow us on LinkedIn, where we will share interesting news on a regular basis. The second one about connecting. We already talked about the link uh, pilots for you is going to make with the new CSAs, the co coordination and support actions, uh, where we will make a link between the platform of facilities and the platform of technologies, tech for bio waste, uh, and we are the platform of uh, uh, facilities. So we hope to be able to confirm another cooperation soon within yet another CSA, one that will help startups and scale-ups to finance. If there are any stakeholders in the audience today, we want to connect uh, who wants to connect? If you want to connect with us, don't hesitate. I'm not the stakeholder relations manager for nothing. Um, and third, on the collaboration, today we organized this webinar, but we are already secretly uh, dreaming of a first physical event. So not a virtual one, a pitching and matchmaking event somewhere at the end of September. We will invite our stakeholders of Pilots for You, of course. So you see, we are excited and motivated to uh, do valuable things with our network in the future. And before closing the webinar, we still have a short Q&A session. So let's go to Nilo again. Thank you, Steph. Uh, I must admit I'm very impressed by the show so far. We've seen many different stakeholders and users passing by a large company, a startup, company, synergy, uh, collaboration between sites, um, the new the scoop with uh, Tech for Bio Waste. This is, uh, this is I think, a, a very nice offer to, to everybody. Um, but now let's see if there is any other question that came in. In the meantime, Stefan, uh, let's see if we can address these. Yeah, uh, we, we received an interesting question. Can you explain the cost that a company can have in using the pilot for see, uh, pilots for you facilities. Uh, well, 
that's a different, uh, difficult question. Uh, each facility will tackle the project appropriately and will make a custom-made uh, quotation. So the advantage of a pilot facility is that all the infrastructure is already present. Uh, you don't have to invest yourself. Moreover, uh, personnel is trained in upscaling. So, so the benefit of using uh, the pilot facilities uh, will allow you to foster progress uh, with your program, uh, with your project, uh, uh, and, and cheaper. Uh, so uh, you don't have to invest all that yourself. Uh, and in the end, you will win time and money. So that was a, a question coming in. Um, and that was it um, um, for, for today. Before uh, giving the last words to you, uh, Nilo, uh, I would like to uh, yeah, thank uh, a couple of people, uh, Nico, Lena, Sophie, who helped us with um, yeah, the preparation of this webinar. But uh, yeah, a very important person is um, Katrien Molders, which is the um, communication manager of the Biobase Europe pilot plant. Without her help, uh, this wasn't possible. Uh, so many thanks to Katrien. Uh, to, to, to help me with this. Um, and uh, of course, also um, many thanks to all the Pilots for You facilities that uh, helped us with uh, this visual input. So many thanks. And uh, yeah, last word is for you. Also, thanks to uh, BIC uh, to support our network in the future. So, Nilo, you have the last words of the webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steph. And I would like to thank you and Katrina also on behalf of BIG, BIG staff, for com completing the project, but not letting it stop right there. We continue to pick it up and we are here to sustain the next steps of this project. So I've I hope that you all have seen that we've created through this project a very efficient platform, a community, an infrastructure that will help us moving forward, deploying the biobase industry across Europe. BIC will continue to refer everybody to this platform, be it a big member or someone who's not a big member. We don't make any difference. And in particular, we're out to help SMEs make use and benefit from these facilities. This uh, show of today will still be available as a stream uh, line. You will be able to find it on the same platform using the same link that you have used to link into this webinar and it will be there for another three weeks or so. The other thing I would like to announce at this uh, closing moment is that we have our next webinar for big members in April. We're still looking at a topic. It will be somewhere around mid April, but the one that's already fixed is on 17th of May, Monday, May 17th, when we will bring together two CSA projects moving out into the market and acceptance of good biobase innovation uh, services. These are all things BioPro and BioSwitch. So that uh, show will be on, on Monday, 17th of May. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did, and we'll hope to see you back again. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.